It's Professor Gabor. Uh, let's talk about public goods. And the public goods we're going to talk about are, are highways, for example. We had a couple of visiting professors from the um, uh, Anway uh, University of Finance and Economics a couple of years ago, and they sat through my economics class, microeconomics class, and took copious notes. Uh, I think they were benchmarking to see how we did things. And I was thinking that, you know, okay, I'm glad you were in the class and enjoyed coming to class and seeing how I teach. I wanted them to teach something, and their specialty was actually public goods, which are tend to be positive externalities, even though it's your tax dollars that pay for them. So, um, uh, Yuan, who is uh, the, the wife of the two couples, she made this presentation, and I thought it was pretty good. So I've been using it since. So we're going to talk about highways for the most part. First of all, what is a public good? And we're going to say, is highway are highways a public good? And what are the problems with and about public goods? So Paul Samuelson in 1954 defined public goods as features of both non-excludable and non-rival. Well, that's a great definition, except we probably got to define what non-excludable and non-rival means. So excludable and non-excludable goods. An excludable good means preventing anyone from consuming the good is relatively easy. Okay? Um, like milk. You gotta buy milk. If you don't buy milk, you can't use it. Uh, so that could be one way. Non-excludable, preventing anyone from consuming the good is either very expensive or impossible, like air. We can't, if, believe me, I think if Chicago could tax air, they would probably do it, but they can't because it's really hard. A non-rival, and rival and non-rival. Rival, once provided the additional resource cost of another person consuming the good, the goal, the good is positive. Um, non-rival, once provided the additional resource cost of another person consuming uh, the good, is zero so like national security and public health if we have we spend money on that it doesn't really matter our population if another person is born they're obviously uh, a beneficiary of national national security so if we look at it if they're rival goods and excludable these are the goods that we normally buy if they're excludable but non-rival, then we're talking about the monopolies that we've already covered in this class, like cable TV, public electricity, those kinds of things, water, local water commissions. Our rival, if there are rival goods, but excludable, it's public grasslands or environment. Um, so we've already covered that, and part of that in the tragedy of the commons and the negative externalities. And if it's non-rival and non-excludable, it's a public good. National defense, basic education, uh, uh, internet, you know, the highway systems. So that, that's a good question. Are highways public goods? Um, you know, so if we talk about uncongested non-toll roads, it's a pure public good. If it's a congested toll road, it's kind of a private good. If it's three congested non-toll road, it's a common resource. And four, if it's an uncongested toll road, it's a natural monopoly of sort. It's a way of looking at it. Uh, the signs of the American highways are, you know, the easy pass or the I pass that we have here. Uh, and it gives you the right to use the road and the money, you're paying the money that goes into maintaining the roads, theoretically. And if you look at Florida's turnpike system, um, you've got the interstates and you've got turnpike system. So whichever are in green, I think the free roads are in blue. Which one do you want to use? Uh, China is doing the same kind of thing. And they're very, very controlling of traffic. I mean, they have cameras all over the place. And you'll get a ticket if you speed. So people drive very carefully in China. But as they built up their infrastructure, their highway system, we see that um, there's a combination of toll and non-toll roads. And they're trying to get people to pay for that. So you can see the vast majority of commerce in the country is done 
in this part of the country. And there's, of course, a tremendous internet interweaving of highway systems. And if I could read Chinese, I'd be able to tell you what these mean. And as you go further west, uh, these are the barren lands uh, where there's not as much industry and not as much of the population. So there's less roads. So comparison of highways between America and China. Charge or not, America's free or toll. China, they're all tolled. The purpose is road maintenance and in China's road maintenance and repay the loan to build up. Because they built their highways very fast. Tolling methods, e-pass or cash. Uh, they have the same in China. Tolling stations by the highway, on the highway, and a lot of times now we have the, the overhead that just reads your e-pass quickly. Who is the builder? The government does most of the highway here, but the reason in China they even have corporate development of some roads. The capital source, high trust fund, fuel tax, sales tax, use tax, federal 90%, state 10%. A private investment, joint ventures, fiscal revenue. So I imagine the roads probably cost a little bit more in China. Uh, the policy is for fiscal balance in the U.S. And there it's loaning for highway and, and charging to repay the loan. What's a free rider? When you have a public good, there's a person who receives the benefit of the good but avoids paying for it. So a free rider is like someone that sneaks on the bus without paying. That's where the term actually comes from. Or the subway. Someone that jumps the turnstile and gets on the, the L or the subway or the public uh, train. So this problem prevents private markets from supplying public, public goods. Solving the free rider problem. Governments can decide to provide the public good if total benefits exceed the cost, national security, environmental protection, etc., basic education. The government can make everyone better off by proving, improving uh, the public goods and paying for it with taxes or fees. Green tax of the 80s and 2018, some of the fuel taxes that we see. So that's a, a view on public goods. That's just a very short presentation I want to share with you. Uh, thank you very much.